morning. Welcome to our FTC online worship service this morning. We're so glad that you're with us. Some of us are over at the park, but we have a service prepared for you so you can worship together with us. Here's what you can expect. We're gonna have some announcements for you. We're gonna have a time of worship so that you can worship together with us. And Pastor Jason and Joy have prepared a message on gentleness for you. And we are so glad that you're with us. Hold on for some announcements. So here are some things that are coming up for all of us this fall. A week from Wednesday night, we'll, our Bible study will be starting again. Pastor Jason will be in the cafe at 7 o'clock on Wednesday nights, and you are very warmly invited to join that group there. Um, it's a great time to maybe meet some new people, even if you haven't been part of Bible study in the past. Then soon after that, we'll be starting Awana in Youth on September 11th. That, start, that um, begins at 4 p.m. For both Awana and Youth, Awana meets in the church building, Youth meets up at the Family Fellowship Center across the parking lot. And you can see myself if you're interested in our kids ministry, Awana, and you can see Gary or Pastor Jason if you're interested in having your either middle school through, teen, through high school kids be a part of our youth group. We would love to see all of them there, so make sure that's on your calendar. And finally, you've been hearing about Financial Peace University, and that is starting on September 14th which is also a Wednesday night, same time as Bible study, 7 p.m. Um, if you would like more information about that, you can sign up at the website so you already have your information there, or you can call the office. You can talk to Jessica or Pastor Jason who can give you some more information about Financial Peace University. But we would love for you to be part of all of those things as your families um, join us on Sunday mornings to be part of our extended family during the week. So thank you and enjoy worship.
Welcome to FDC's online worship experience today. If we haven't met, my name is Jason. This is my wife, Joy. Joy, say hello. Hello. Welcome. We're so glad that you've taken a few minutes to join us today. And uh, this is a special day. This is our first time that we've had an online-only worship service. So we're excited that you would take part in it. And we'd love to hear uh, your feedback about how today's experience was. We're concluding this morning uh, our summer-long series on the fruit of the Spirit. We've been studying Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 and 23, which says, but the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And this morning, we're going to spend a few minutes talking with you and with each other about the idea of gentleness. Joy, as I say gentleness, or as I make you, as I talk about gentleness, what's the first thing that comes to your mind about it? Um, I think, I've actually thought a lot about this. Um, I think when we generally think of gentleness, we think of somebody that's soft and kind and soft-spoken. Um, but as you and I have talked a lot about this, and we see in Scripture, that's not necessarily what gentleness means. Um, and so when I think of gentleness in my life, I see a few different scenarios where gentleness has played out. Um, one of them being here when we came to Faith Discovery Church, um, and I've looked at Pastor Jerry, I have seen how he has been very um, gentle in his um, demeanor and the way he's been with us, which has just been a meekness, a kindness, a a generosity, all these things. Um, And that was the big example that stood out to me. And I've also seen times in my life where somebody has reprimanded me, and they've been so gentle in the way they've done it. My mom at different times... It's 
been hard for her, but she's come to me and said, Joy, in this situation, you were wrong. And so I've seen gentleness throughout my life in a few different ways, but I do feel like it's not a very common thing that we see today in our society. Yeah, that was, uh, as I was thinking about our conversation and, and thinking about what we were going to talk about and doing some prep work in terms of study and thinking about gentleness. Um, similar to what you had expressed the first time we talked about it was, I don't know that I've experienced gentleness too much in my life. It's, it's almost a characteristic or a trait that's looked down upon in our society. And it really goes along with, uh, or this is kind of the same idea as meekness. You know, Jesus in, in Matthew chapter five, that what we call the Beatitudes said, blessed are the meek for they will inherit the earth. And uh, this, the word that's used there is the same as gentle. And there's mm-hmm. this gentleness that is looked at, I think is looked down on our right. society. And the more I've re- read about it, it was a, it's a, an idea that was looked down upon in their society as well. There is honor and there is pride in strength and improving your strength. Right. And the idea of being gentle or soft uh, with others uh, it shows almost like a weakness. Right. And so that's certainly, a weakness isn't celebrated in our society. Right. Well, it's every, we're, we have to stand up for ourselves and go after what we want. And it almost seems like that is against gentleness. Yeah. Gentleness is, um, almost seems like it's the opposite. Like you're, you're soft and you just let people trample on you. And as we, you and I have talked about this and turn to scripture, we actually see that that's not what gentleness is right. at all. Yeah, you've, you, you've especially found some, some inspiration in the idea of gentleness from one biblical Old Testament character, especially. You wanna share a little bit about that? Sure, as I was thinking about gentleness, I often go to the scripture um, in 2 Samuel, and, and actually it's, it's a psalm as well. Um, psalm 18. Psalm 18, and it talks about, it's when David won, the title of the psalm is when David won victory over his enemies and Saul. And he goes into the scripture and he starts, you know, talking about all these things that the Lord has done and the power of the Lord and his might. And it's um, an amazing scripture. And it's actually also, he talks about it at the end of his life. Yeah. After he's lived this life of victories and defeats and sin and redemption, he also mirrors that exact same psalm. Yeah, so just to get a, a sense, the Psalm 18 is written in the early ports, par- portions of David's life before right. uh, some of the shortcomings that David became famous for. Right. Uh, before the sin with Bathsheba, before right. the struggles with uh, his son. And so he writes this, and in it, there was a line that it particularly stood out yes. to you. And so he goes through the psalm, he goes through the strength and the might of the Lord and what he's done. And then he gets um, to verse 35. You have also given me the shield of your salvation. Your right hand has held me up. Your gentleness has made me great. And what I find fascinating about this is he talks all about, you know, the Lord has made his way perfect. God has made his feet like a deer, has set me on high places. Um, you're, you teach my hand to make war. And all of these descriptions about how, you know, for by my God, I could leap over a wall. And all these things that seem like you would be great, like look what God has done in this. And he's saying, your gentleness has made me great. And that was what really stuck out to me. Yeah, and as, I've, as, as you, we talked about that, and as I studied that, um, you know, it's the word that he's using there, the idea that he's talking about is the gentleness of the Lord has made him great in prosperity, in number. And so it's grown his influence. It's grown his family. It's grown his uh, finances. It's, it's made his life remarkable. Hmm. The idea that God's gentleness has made David's life remarkable. And so he says that early in his life. Mm-hmm. And then there's the other passage that you found that's him reflecting late in his life. As he's reflecting on the end of his life. And he says basically, you know, the same thing. 
Mm-hmm. Right? Right. Right. And also, um, there's this response. So it's the gentleness that David has received from the Lord. It's also the gentleness that David has learned from the Lord and then in kind has been gentle. Right. It's this, you know, David at different times in his life you can see how the gentleness of the Lord he responded to, and that saved him in many ways. Yeah. Um, it was a protection upon him, which I also find so amazing that he received it from the Lord, and he learned it from the Lord, and he learned how to be gentle from the Lord. And so he recognizes it, right? And then, you know, there are a number of instances where we see him then be gentle outwards. Mm. He uh, specifically, probably most well known is Mephibosheth. Um, the son of Jonathan. And Jonathan is Saul's son. And so Mephibosheth is Saul's grandson. Saul was a king. His next in line, his heir is Jonathan. Um, And so certainly, if you think about claims to the throne, Mephibosheth, because he's Jonathan's son, has a claim to the throne. And Uh, typically in those days, any claim to the throne that would be considered a threat to your kingdom would be eliminated. Right. And not only is is David's response towards Mephibosheth not to eliminate him, but it's to welcome him and to give him this person who was a, the strikes against Mephibosheth are, he's an heir to the throne, right? He's handicapped. Right. And so in those days to be handicapped was to not be celebrated. There was, there was to be shunned. And so this person who has multiple strikes against him, David welcomes him to a place for the rest of his life at his table. Right. And not only that, it was, so it's so common that when a new king, you know, a new king is victorious, the old line is wiped out if it's not in your line. Yeah. And not only that, but it was when... Mephibosheth was little and they found out, his maidservant found out that David was victorious. She picked him up to run because she was afraid of the attack and she dropped him. Mm. And that's how he became crippled is what what scripture says. And so it was even this response of we are no longer in, you know, the line of the king and she picks up, runs, drops him. And now here every right in, in those days was that that family would be wiped out. Yeah. And David's response is, not only am I not going to wipe you out, I'm not going to kill you or make you less than, I am going to put you, give you a seat at my table. Yeah. And what that does for Mephibosheth is completely life-changing. Yeah. He gives him a seat at his table. He has people farm land for him and take care of him. And... That completely changed his life. He went from being... And then there are other elements where in David's life where he makes choices that don't reflect the character of God and ultimately acts in the opposite of gentleness. Right. Um, and is faced with consequences from that. And so we see him honor God's honor and recognize God's gentleness early in life. Mm. Almost... Almost you can get the picture where this is happening in a way that is naive, like an ideal situation. And then at the end of his life, in a reflective mindset, he again calls upon that and realizes that it's not only an ideal, but that's where God's blessing dwell on him the most. Right. Uh, That's where God's, you know, God, the Bible ultimately calls David a man after God's own heart. Um, certainly there were times where he didn't reflect that, but this idea at the end where he comes back to it. And so you said something earlier, uh, you know, that's, we see this in scripture. We see the character of, of God being gentle. Um, and we see how that's opposite from what our society says to, to do. You talked about how you've experienced a little bit with your mom. How, how have those conversations gone? What, how does this really flesh out in terms of how do we act as gentle people in a world that doesn't really um, 
appreciate gentleness. Mm -hmm. You know what, it's, and you see this a little bit in David's life, but, you know, I, when we were reflecting on gentleness and I, I was trying to think of times where I really felt that I, one particular thing came to, to my mind with my mom and um, we had had a holiday, we're a big family and I have three sisters and, you know, brother-in-laws and nieces and nephews and um, we got into a little spat over something and I was so greatly offended and the next day my mom had called me and um, my mom ever so gently and wisely said, Joy, you were wrong and you should go to this person, you should apologize. And what I realized in that moment was, you know, gentleness isn't this, I'm going to um, tell you what you want to hear, I'm going to be kind. It was, there was such, what she did was she helped me. She allowed me to keep from sinning in mm. going to the person, in humbling myself, in asking for a, an apology. And it was actually this humbling experience. And when I think of that in different ways, you could see that in our lives. When somebody actually came to us, reprimanded us, you know, and, and it, it's a, that's a good thing. Yeah, almost like in, in changing the idea of, it, of gentleness not being a weakness, but gentleness is almost strength yes. with grace. Right. Uh, strength with grace, strength with mercy. And um, there have been times where I can tell you, you, I can share with you, all of you, that I, there are times where I'm not the most gentle. Uh, I can be a, a, a stern disciplinarian with our kids. Our kids, m when they want to confess something, they are much more comfortable talking to you than they are to me because they don't think it's going to go well. And I've learned um, that as I've allowed God to work in me, um, I'm learning to become more gentle, even as a parent, even as a dad, not that I'm a walkover, but uh, especially when they've fa failed, when they've mm -hmm. missed the mark, when they've done something and they need help. Uh, it, something in my character has changed because I find God's heart and God's love for them is more recognizable in my spirit. And so I'm able to control myself. Uh, we talked about self-control last week. I'm able to control myself and not act in anger, but to be merciful and to be mm. uh, gracious and to help them walk through whatever it is right. that they're doing. And that's so much how our Heavenly Father looks at us. Right. And I think too, like nowadays in our society, in our world, we're told that the things that make us great, the things that mm. are that's, important that's is our success, our uh, influence, our wealth, our family line. There's all these things. And God, you know, has come in and completely turn that upside down. These are not the things that make you great. You know, these are not the things that you, you need. And when I see, you know, you see that in, in even what David's saying, even at the end of his life, you know, and you look through the thread of this life, you see gentleness woven in there on yeah. how people are with him and how that was a protection around him. Look at the story of Abigail and how, you know, she came out and she stopped him from sinning and all these things. When people come around you with gentleness, it's almost like a, a protection. You know, my mom coming to me and saying, you were wrong. And it really was a time where I was able to ask forgiveness and that person bestowed the forgiveness upon me. Those are all important things in the, in the kingdom of God. Those are all important things in, in the eyes of God. Yeah, and when we act in gentleness or when someone acts gentle towards us, it is recognizable because it's so different than what we assume. You know, oftentimes when we're heading up to a difficult conversation, I know for me, I certainly know for you, like we're running through all the worst case scenarios in our mind. And when we get to that conversation and the person doesn't react in the worst way we thought they might, like it's always so uplifting. Mm. And so as we, as we kind of tie a bow on, on this morning, and again, thanks for spending such, uh, you know, a couple of minutes with us as we talk about this. Um, I, I, the last thing I, I'd like to share is just, I'm struck by Jesus and his gentleness. And there's two times 
that have stuck up to me the last couple of days. First, Jesus' decision to wash the disciples' feet. Um, the man who is God, choosing to humble himself and to so graciously, caringly wash mm. the, the, the people who are his servants, right? Right. Uh, their feet. And then on the cross, uh, Jesus welcomes one of the other people on the cross into paradise with him. Like even in that moment when he's carrying all, we know, and we believe he's carrying all of the weight of all of humanity's failure. He's looking around and finding a way to be compassionate, to be gentle towards someone who in many ways we would say doesn't deserve it. Mm. And, uh, be, and that's good because I don't deserve it. And yet God is gentle with me. And because he's gentle with me, like David, I then can be gentle to others in mm. response to what he's doing to right. me. Right. And that's really the joy of it. We see the gentleness from the Lord to us. And God gives us the opportunity to then be gentle to others. And that is such a, a goodness of him, that we can then take that and be gentle to others. And um, I think that that's actually an amazingly beautiful thing that we're able to then reflect the character of God, what he has done for us, and reflect it with other people. Um, what's better than that? So, Joy, thanks so much for joining us today, and thank you for joining us today. Uh, as you go through your, out your week, um, I hope you have a great week, and you'll join us next week as we look to start walking through the gifts of the Spirit. Have a great week, and I'll pray for you as we go. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord give you peace. God, as we go forward this week, I pray you'd give us opportunities to be gentle with people. And I pray for those of us who are sitting uh, wherever we are right now, who are sitting somewhere where we're on the screen and we're participating in this morning's conversation, who are in need to experience gentleness. God, I pray for anyone who's facing a really difficult situation with someone who has authority. I pray that somehow your spirit would work away, that, your authority, that that authority would be met or controlled with grace and mercy. God, be honored by everything we say and do. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Have a great week.